Hey, what's up, guys? And welcome to episode six of Mr. Millennial's Revenge. I'm your host, Nick DiMaria. What did I say last week? Elections? Yeah, no shit. (laughs) Oh, boy. So I'm recording this episode. Uh, Today is uh, November 12th. And, um, you know, I wasn't expecting (laughs) I wasn't expecting to do two political episodes, especially back to back. But, uh, you know, again, how could you not comment on what the fuck is going on? Um, But I do have the good news, right? I have the good news that we were uh, waiting for. I talked about on the last episode how fucking nervous I was about the election results and what could possibly be four years of pure hell. Thank God that did not happen. However, we now live in an America where (laughs) not 50 percent, but alarmingly close percentage to that do not believe in math and we are living in like two parallel universes at once where we have people who have brains and obviously understand thing how things work have accepted that joe biden was elected president 46 president thank fucking god um but then we have this whole other alternate reality where <laughs> Where Trump's where Trump won, um, and it, it's man, I I never thought like I talk about this all the time. Like when I was a kid, and I would I would figure out what what uh you know what the world would be like when I was 30, 40, 50, 60 years old, and I would think about these years, and I I remember being like eight years old and being like, wow, I'm gonna be in my 30s like during 2020, like what a time to be alive, you know, the jetpacks, the flying cars, the laser beams, the you know the moon the uh, moon colony, the Mars colony, all that stuff. You know, I had no idea that. I guess the the most surprising part is how fucking stupid people can be and how they can just fall into this realm of 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 living basically living in a different dimension. They live in a a, a different version of Earth. Some sort of multiverse collision occurred, and we have two Earths living uh, simultaneously at the same time. Uh, that's totally redundant, but you know what I mean. I it's insane. You know, and I've been I've been wondering, like, why why do people why do people follow, you know, QAnon? Why do people follow Trump? Why why do people follow these fallacies and, and these terrible terrible movements? Um, and you know, I, I I really I really think it's because it is a reflection of a huge problem in our society, especially American society. I can't really comment too much abroad, but. I can comment from what I observe in my own home and land and whatnot. People don't have purpose. People just, they have nothing that they look forward to. They they have dead-end jobs or they feel uninspired in their work. They have no real hobbies that allow them to be creative. And I think that's why. I think when you go through life and, you know, things didn't turn out the way they were planned or there's nothing really exciting to look forward to you look for purpose and unfortunately be it's easier to become a victim of this mind fuck known as conspiracy theories and 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 fake news and false information and all this stuff I, i really think that's true i think because i have music and my other hobbies it keeps me centered it keeps me focused on reality because I'm focused on myself and I think that if more people had outlets to express themselves and to build things and to create things uh, maybe they wouldn't turn to such nefarious forces you know I think in the Biden years and 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 and, and onward we need to get people taking art classes, music classes, shop, uh, industrial arts kind of stuff. People need to fucking build stuff in their homes, model airplanes, 
learn how to play the piano, learn calligraphy. Uh, calig- uh, calig- I can't even say this fucking word. You know what I'm talking about, the fancy lettering. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, I've always wondered... Um, I always thought I had a, a speech impediment, and I really, I really do think so. There's just some words I can't say. Calligraphy, that's one. Uh, I have a hard time with peculiar. I have to say it very slow. Um, I just can't do it. I can't do it. I also can't roll my R's, and I can't bend my tongue in like that U shape that people do. That's probably, uh, probably related, and why I always say you know and um a lot. It's, uh, it's a stuttering thing. I'm pretty sure. But anyway. Uh, people need to do things. People need to create things. And I think if you are creating and you even, you know, in any way, it it fulfills a part of your soul that would be easily snagged by uh, a person like Trump or the Proud Boys or Fox News or all this right wing bullshit. Um, I think... You know, I want to. I, I, I want to believe that people are are inherently good. Unfortunately, I definitely believe people are inherently selfish and stupid sometimes. But I think they would be more inclined to see the world if they had the opportunity to participate in it. Maybe, maybe that's why. Maybe people believe in fucking PizzaGate and Trump and all this shit is because they don't do anything that fulfills a part of their soul that allows them to be part of the world and you know a lot of a lot of these people you know turn to church and i'm not bashing christianity man but there's a significant problem there and i think if anything it makes your world smaller not bigger now i know there's people that do missionary work in church groups go and travel and do great things you know i'm not talking about that i'm talking about the kind of like brimstone and hellfire bullshit that makes you uh believe that your uh homosexual uh neighbors don't deserve a wedding cake and stuff like that and equality you know and 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 respect and you know i mean it, it all definitely comes down to respect but i think that people need to get out in the world and uh start experiencing other people you know and i'm not talking about going to you know, another country. I'm saying, you know, people in the Midwest need to go to the coasts. The coastal people need to go to the Midwest. And you need to see how, even though uh, this country is one country, it is made up of many different people. And there, there are a lot of lost souls. And I think it's important that we try to help as much as we can. You know, I'm glad I've got music. I'm, I, I, I gl- I'm glad I, uh, for it very much. And, uh, I, I would I would certainly be lost without it, so I I I appreciate its place in my life. You know, I also have other hobbies too. I think it's important to have other things to do, especially you know. And I've talked about this on the show. Like, you need to get away from music, of course. And that's you know, if you want to hear about that conversation, go tune into other episodes. But you need you need outlets, and you and I think creativity is the most important. It really is, and. We do those things when we're kids, right? How many of you draw, you know, or how many of you drew when you were a kid? How many of you did stuff where you created imaginary characters or forts in the woods or or anything like that? Just pick up games, any kind of thing. That's all creative stuff. If you kept a journal when you were a kid or you wrote stories when you were a kid, you were doing that. And I think a lot of adults, or as we become adults, we forget about that stuff and it creates this hole, it, th- this massive hole in your soul. And I think that's why you you will believe that people who uh, believe in true equality for everybody are not the enemy. So anyway, with that, all that being said, we do have a new president. I'm very happy to say that Joe Biden was elected president. He He's not, look... He's not my favorite politician in the world. I'm not going to fucking, I'm not the Joe Biden cheerleading squad here, but there are far worse people. (laughs) You know, we had the worst person for the last four years. We still have a lot of terrible people in Congress that are hurting. They're hurting other people. You know, one side is doing damage. (laughs) So I'm glad that a lot of people, you know, adulted up and did the right thing. 
And like I said last time, we, we need to get involved. We need to hold our leaders accountable. And, you know, elections matter every four, uh, every year, not every four years. Um, and, you know, I'm 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 a Bernie supporter and I, I, I've always been disappointed that Bernie, you know, was, uh, you know, he never got as far as he deserved. Um, and I think that's a generational thing. I always talk to my parents about it. My my you know, my mom was. You know, don't get me wrong. My mom, who I think was a oh, Elizabeth Warren person, and during the primaries, you know, she was like, oh, "Nobody likes Bernie," and I'm like, "Oh, that's like, like what? Boomer crap, right? <laughs> like I don't even know what that means." Uh, but I'm not gonna go into. I'm not definitely not gonna bash my mom because, uh, you know, my mom is uh, a wonderful woman, and a lot of my moral and political compass bearings are uh directly from her so i i i will know you know i love you mom <laughs> i can disagree with her of course but uh you know um, it's just there's a generational thing i think with bernie and uh unfortunately it, it'll never come to be some people are are saying that he'll, he'll be in the uh cabinet as labor secretary i'd rather him stay in the senate he could do a lot more if he stayed in the Senate uh, than labor secretary. So I know they're, you know, I've heard, I've seen stories, rumors that uh, him and Warren are being like locked out of the cabinet and positions and stuff. But it's like, you know what, to be honest with you, that's probably for the better because uh, they could do more in the Senate, which would be, which is the true battleground. You know, the next four years to come, we're going to have to battle that fucking turtle ass piece of shit, Mitch McConnell. And, uh, you know, it's going to be terrible because he's like fucking Mr. Burns personified. So, you know, we have a new era upon us, guys. I hope we can use this as a reset. Please, I beg you, I beg you to stay informed, stay vigilant, and pay attention to what goes on around you because your, vo- your vote does matter. Your, your, your voice does matter. We... This country belongs to all of us, not this like ruling class that thinks that they know better than us. You know, we need to educate our brothers and sisters. We need to bring the arts and the humanities into the forefront so that people, uh, you know, can get on the right course, man. And we can get back to fucking being decent to each other uh, across the board. You know, we need to we need to listen more than ever. Um you know, my goal is to get people to listen to the Black Lives Matter message who don't and uh, and to stop blaming poor people for the problems that they face for being poor. So, uh, you know, the Jazz Underground is always raising money for the Connecticut Food Bank. Um, food insecurity is a big issue for me as an educator in the city, but, you know, as a person in general, uh, I think that's something that uh, we need to think about a lot. That reminds me, we got the winter sock drive. It's going to start soon. Um, like I said, we're going to take donations by, you know, the, you know, when you go into target and there's like that plastic bag full of white socks, we're going to buy those. So your donations will go to buy, buying packs of socks and then we'll be able to, you know, the Rodriguez family, boom, we'll write their name on the, on the pack and then just give it to them. And then, you know, a family with three or four kids, couple, you know, they can get pair uh two two three pairs of socks each that's the goal because winter socks are important this is going to be a dark winter uh, as you can tell with all the rising cases and everything so uh we need to look out for each other all right so so please uh please consider that and um yeah so uh let's get to the housekeeping the uh (laughs) the new haven jazz underground is a grassroots community-based organization that is dedicated to producing concerts clinics and festivals in the name of our lord duke ellington and jazz across the board in the state of connecticut in the greater new haven area we are completely crowdfunded so if you'd like to be a sponsor please go to patreon.com slash nhvju and sign up for as low as two bucks and help directly fund our efforts. Our Mind the Hang series will continue in December. We're trying to do something uh, holiday-themed. We'll see what we got. Uh, like us on Facebook and Instagram, uh, facebook.com slash NHVJU, uh, and that's where we post most of our information and where we go live and post shows. So uh, we're looking to get um, a good act uh, announced for the December Mind the Hang. And again, your Patreon Patreon contributions directly go to those performers. 
<clears throat> excuse me. So please consider becoming a, uh, a patron at patreon.com slash NHVJU. So today is uh, November 12th, and uh, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, mention that it is secretly a holiday, and you all don't know, I'm sure. But November 12th, 1955 is the day Marty McFly went back to the future. <laughs> I'm a huge Star Wars nerd. Everybody knows that. But I am also a huge Back to the Future nerd. Oh, and obviously Simpsons. But Back to the Future, fucking love that movie, man. Um I think the third one is better than the second one. Fight me on it, please. However, the most creative part about the second one, I will say, is that it is a sequel that exists inside the original movie. That is pretty cool. I will give it that. But I love westerns, and I just... I, I The third one is good. <laughs> I, I like it. I know it's corny. The third one is the one I remember seeing the, uh, m- the most vividly in the theater. So... When I was a kid, so I was born in 83, I missed the first one, obviously, um, but when the uh, part two and part three came out, they both came out in the same year, or they came out, uh, part two was 89, and then part three was 90, it was like something like that, because they were filmed like back to back, and uh, at the time, my dad was a cop in Waterbury, and for like extra overtime, he would guard this movie theater in Waterbury, and uh, I guess my, my aunt's cousin was the manager, something like that. And uh, so we'd go visit my dad and he'd be able to sneak us in, I guess, uh, you know, don't tell anybody now, but uh, he would let, you know, they'd let us in and we watched the movie. And I remember watching Back to the Future uh, sitting in the aisle. Uh, I remember sitting next to those like little lights that glow on the floor. I was right there and I watched, I know I watched part two because I remember the, the DeLorean landing. So that was definitely part two. I, I remember that. And then I also remember watching a good chunk of part three uh, sitting on the floor of probably a sticky floor of, uh, of the movie theater. And uh, I always appreciated that. And, and, and oh, and also <laughs> this was around the time that my dad would bring home. This is who my dad is, everybody. There were there were, you know, at the end of the night, the movie theater puts all the popcorn in a garbage bags. My dad would take it home. I'm sure he. Re- I'm sure he said to himself, you know, because because if I'm if I'm doing the math correctly, my dad's roughly the age I am right now. So I'm thinking like late mid to late thirties, Mike D. Maria. Uh, and for those of you who know my dad, I mean, we're talking back when he had the jet black curly hair and the Frank Zappa mustache. Uh, my dad's very much a silver fox now. Still has the mustache, but we're talking like. Ned Flanders esque uh, push broom mus- mustache going, but but back in the '90s he still had like the little Zappa like uh, Kurt Russell from Tombstone, uh, you know, flair that you know as it and almost into a full handlebar, but not quite. But he, I'm sure he was like, oh, I got kids at home. Let me let me bring home this popcorn. So I remember in our dining room there were there was always like a bag or two trash bags of of popcorn. And it was always stale, and it was always gross. And my mom would always be like, you know, if you want, mom, can I have a snack? My mom would be like, go get some popcorn. And I'd be like, ugh, you know, because it was always horrendous. It was all this, like, stale-ass popcorn from the fucking movie theater, dude. What a time to be alive. <laughs> you know, my I'm sure it made sense to my dad. My mom probably just went with it, but what a terrible idea because I'm sure that at some point my mom was strategically hiding the popcorn in our garbage pails so the neighbors wouldn't see that we had garbage bags full of popcorn, you know? She probably double bagged it in black hefty bags so nobody would notice. That, that, that that's <laughs> that's my dad. You know what I mean? Like my dad would always get invited to like talk about being a cop to like my class, right? And he'd always come in, but he'd. Pro- I'm sure he like took it a little too far. I remember him showing us like vials that drugs would come in, and like you know, uh, fucking like I, I think he showed like a bullet once, maybe or something, or a pair of brass knuckles or something. I'm sure it was not kosher, but it, it was like <laughs> it was a simpler time back then. I don't know. Just you know, it, 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 you think back about the the stuff. Dad, dads are, and as some of my friends are becoming, I'm, I'm noticing. Their, their dadisms, but dadisms are, are one of a kind, right? Aren't they? 
you know, to my buddies who are fathers, I see it. You're turning into dads too. You know, well, you are dads, but like your dadisms are starting to come out and it's hilarious to watch. And I'm sure some of you will be texting me after this episode being like, what are my, uh, what are my dadisms since you brought them up? I will be happy to tell you. It's all good stuff. We love dads. Dads for their jokes and their style and their, you know, their stuff, you know, dadisms, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, today is November 12th and, uh, um, it is the day that Marty McFly went back to the future. Back to the future. Uh, I, I tend to watch it either uh, today or uh, on October 26th, uh, 25th. Oh, shit. October 20. Now I'm fucking. Man, what kind of fan am I, right? It's October 25th, 26th, or 21st. I'm totally blanking. I'm going to. Just look real quick here. Let's see. But anyway, um, it's the uh, 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 the the time on the um, on the time circuits, which um, uh, you know. Oh shit! It's gonna kill me. I'm looking it up right now. I'm checking out my. I just posted too. October twenty six is the day Marty went uh, to the past. So it was October 26, 1985. He gets in the DeLorean. He's chased by the Libyans. He goes into the 50s from there. So I, it was so weird. It's it's also Eddie Henderson's birthday. So like I need to remember that better. I'm usually good with dates. But anyway, so I usually watch Back to the Future, uh, you know, in the fall between uh, late October, early November. But just, you know, to keep things, uh, to keep things uh, you know, on track. It's good to watch things when they occur, right? So... What a fucking classic. So many good fucking lines in that movie. Uh, and uh, it's amazing that it survived not being remade, you know? I mean, I feel like every year we hear about uh, a, a remake in the works. Good God, I hope they don't do it because, you know, it'll be fucking terrible. What makes that movie so great is the era in which it was made. I think, um, you know, a lot of remakes, I think a lot of you would would agree, a lot of remakes do bad because... The, the producers, directors, they don't realize that those movies are products of their era, you know? Like, I remember seeing the remake of RoboCop, and it was fine, but it's just, it's not as good as RoboCop. RoboCop's fucking amazing, and it's because it could only have existed in ni- in the late 80s. It could have only, you know, it, it, it said so much. Uh, you know, it's funny enough to, to, to get on a, a RoboCop tangent. It's amazing that how topical it is, its message you know, if you don't remember, I'm not going to ruin it for you. Go watch RoboCop again. It's strangely 21st century relatable, you know, even though I think it does take place in the 21st century, which is fucking out on another level. So, <laughs> but anyway, happy November 12th, everybody. Uh, we need to celebrate these small victories. I think it's important for <laughs> our sanity in the era of COVID. As more and more cases uh, rise, we need to look to things to keep us positive. So I hope uh, everyone can sit back this weekend and check out uh, one of the Back to the Future movies. It's always a good idea to pop those in. So uh, I wanted to bring up uh, an unsung hero of jazz who I was uh, checking out a lot the last couple of days and who I consider uh, a personal hero of mine. I uh, I think he was the first jazz musician I wrote an email to uh, cold cold called you know uh, and and asked for advice. Uh, that would be tenor saxophonist, well multi instrumentalist really, Benny Maupin. Uh, Benny Maupin. He's one of my favorite saxophone players, one of my favorite woodwind players of all time. Of course, because he was in the Juan Dishi band, like everything, everything is related to the Juan Dishi band. Get it with it. <laughs> but no, I mean, like everybody, I first heard him on Headhunters, didn't really think much of him, you know, because I was in high school and early college and he just sounded like a good sax player. Uh, but once I discovered the, the Wandishi band, like I really started digging the fact that he played other instruments and he was a real creative force. He was the only member of the Wandishi band that went on to head headhunters actually. But, uh, you know, his work, uh, with Lee Morgan and his solo stuff, um, is, has always been really enjoyable. So I thought I'd share, um, some instances I've had, I got, I got to see, uh, Benny uh, play at the Jazz Standard around 2009. He uh, he just released an album called uh, Prenumbra. I hope I said that right. And uh, 
it's a quartet album, uh, 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 Benny, bass, drums, percussion. And I went by myself. I, I, I went through this phase. I, I feel like I'm still going to always go through this phase where I like music that none of my friends do. <laughs> and uh, I went to the Jazz Standard a lot by myself. Um, I saw Dave Douglas uh, with his, m- with many of his bands by myself there. Uh, I, uh, Jeremy Pelt uh, and uh, amongst other stuff. And, and But anyway, I saw uh, Benny Moppin's group. It, it was incredible. I mean, just the bass clarinet playing alone. And I uh, would write a song dedicated to him called Benny, which is on my first record. And I emailed him and I asked him for, uh, ins- you know, things to work on uh, improvisationally and, and, and musically and he he responded he 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 sent me um some material to work on and he was very nice and and um i was not surprised by that you know fast forward a couple of years there was this lee morgan tribute at the iridium and eddie was playing so uh, eddie henderson that is and so i went obviously and i went alone uh all i remember in the band was it was lenny uh lonnie plaxico on bass um can't remember who else was in the band but what was amazing was it was eddie henderson uh, on trumpet and then benny moppin on saxophone and i thought that was so cool because to me i was like oh my god to you know part of the front line of wandishi playing together you know they play they played tons of lee morgan hits they play, you know the sidewinder um you know stuff like that and you know his blue note stuff speedball i definitely remember them playing that tune and uh but afterwards uh, I got to sit at a table with Eddie and Benny and, and and just listen to two Titans, old friends talk. And it was great. And I, what I didn't know was it was the first time they had performed together in like 30 years, which was insane to think about. Uh, it, you would never guess it. They they acted like they see each other and talk all the time. Uh, it, it, it was a wonderful experience. And to top it off, uh, Horse Silver came by. And I got to say hi to him. He was in pretty bad health at the time. He was in a wheelchair. It was right before the end. But I got Eddie, you know, kind of bridged that introduction, which was really nice um, to see. And so I never got to see Horse Silver play live. So that was as close as I got. So, you know, some of these guys, they were, you know, they were they were dying around that time, the early, you know, that first decade of the 2000s. So I was, you know, lucky enough to see a few of them perform or just see – them like I did Horse Silver. But anyway, Benny Moppin, such a nice guy. Uh, he was always smiling, you know, like it, people who smile all the time, like it is welcoming and it's warming. And he was he was very nice. And I, I love just being a, a listener in their conversation and, and listen to their uh, reminiscing about uh, gigs and bands and musicians and all that stuff. That was really great. So uh, I've always been a fan of Benny Moppin. And uh, I wanted to share some of the tracks that uh, I've been checking out lately. Again, I can't play them on the show. I'll get flagged, I'm pretty sure. So check these out on your own. But what's really cool is uh, a lot of you know stuff that he recorded um, with Herbie would get recorded without Herbie, you know, on his on his own record. So go 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 check out the record. Slow traffic to the right. It's one of uh, it's from 1977. It's one of his. He doesn't have a lot of records under his own name, and uh, on this record is two of my favorite songs, "Water Torture" and "Quasar." "Quasar" might be my favorite track off of "Crossings" by Herbie Hancock. And what's amazing is "Water Torture" uh, and uh, "Quasar." Very spacey. Very very um. Uh, you know, uh, go go check them out. What's amazing is how they perfectly fit a jazz funk vibe with with more structure with more with without the wandishi touch let's say uh these two tracks are are so great um you know you could hear it's amazing to listen to like quasar with you know when you with herbie's man you could hear how they approached it and then when you just want a straight up fucking you know jazz funk version so slow slow traffic to the right incredible incredible record moonscapes is cool too it's in the same um it's in the same vein just your classic jazz funk uh you know products of 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 headhunters you know like people say that uh you know they're like there's the the bands that were in the wake of bitches brew right and they all have a bitches brew sound to them in some way return to forever mind of issue new orchestra tony williams lifetime those 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 uh 
first that first wave of fusion bands that could be directly connected to Bitches Brew. There are albums that are directly connected to Headhunters. Uh, Herbie ha- shares that with Miles in that sense, where like from that sound branched out other sounds. So uh, another example is like you know Sunburst by Eddie Henderson, like your classic jazz funk album, you know. Uh, and that's what Slow Traffic to the Right and Moonscapes uh, definitely embody that like that Headhunters hang up your hang ups kind of uh, you know uh, vibe, you know, which is always enjoyable. And then. Um, and of course, uh, Jewel in the Lotus, which is a really different album. Uh, I, if I if I'm not mistaken, it's Benny's debut album as a leader, and definitely not of the jazz funk genre. It's it's uh it, it's um it's of its own universe. And uh, if you like you know that ECM vibe, you'll you'll dig that one for sure. And I think a lot of members of Wandish are in it. I believe Herbie's on it. I believe Billy Hart's on it. Um, Buster Williams is probably on it. Uh, so it's definitely worth checking out. And then finally, from 2009 or eight, is uh, it's under the name the Benny Moppin Ensemble. But this is that quartet record I was talking about, uh, Penumbra. And, uh, I mean, just killing, killing stuff, guys. Uh one of my favorite tunes uh, on this uh, album is Neophilia 2006, which is a rehash of the two Neo- Neophilia, which he recorded with Lee Morgan. And um, I believe Max Roach has a version too. I got to check that out. I got to double check. But uh, just killing tunes. We all need to give uh, Benny Moppin our love and support. And because he's still with us, that's the thing. I I think he's out west. I, I I've always wanted to get him for a New Haven Jazz Underground event because like these guys are our elder statesmen. You know, I remember being in college and we were trying to pick who do we you know who do we want to visit school, and people always want you know people were saying all these modern guys. It's like motherfucker, like Cedar Wallen's still alive. Let's get Cedar Wallen, right? Obviously, this was a while ago because Cedar's no longer with us. So, you know. Now we have another generation, that generation of Eddie, Benny Maupin, uh, Gary Bartz, um, you know, Billy Hart. These guys are 80. They're like literally all turning 80 this year. We need to honor them. We need to see them. We need to support them as much as possible while we while they are still here, before they uh, make that inevitable change, you know, and cross over to the great beyond and, you know, and become part of the Dow or whatever. Like we need to honor them and, and enjoy them for uh, for who they are right now, not just what they did 40, 50 years ago, but today. So definitely check out Benny Maupin, especially if you're overdue for a listening. Um, he's definitely in the Joe Henderson uh, school of playing, I, I feel. Um, I dig that. Joe's my favorite tenor saxophonist. So, um, you know, check out Li- uh, Live at the Lighthouse with Lee Morgan check out um all the herbie stuff he's on but then definitely check out those records i talked about his solo stuff you will not be you certainly will not be disappointed okay so today's guest uh as you can tell from the uh episode title is uh my italian big sister of new haven right karen ponzio kp KP the word, KP the journalist, KP the human being. She stopped by the show a little while ago. This interview is from a couple of weeks ago, but uh, you know, I wanted to make sure that I got excellent interviews uh, before the holiday season. I know people are going to be busy, so I'm trying to book all my interviewees um, you know, early so I can put out great episodes for the holiday. So she decided, uh, she graciously uh, joined me on the show. She has always been a ray of light, uh, a, 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 a beacon of energy and goodwill and good vibes. It is always a pleasure to talk to Karen. It, you know, it is not uncommon to run into her at one of the many great venues in our city. And she writes for the New Haven Independent, uh, and we talk about her work there, and we talk about her, um, you know, what she's into, uh, liter- uh, you know, talking about literature and poetry and what she's done. And, uh, it, it was, it was great. And, and, and most importantly, and I need to have KP back on the show so we can talk about it. It's called sauce people. 
It's not called gravy. I don't know what the hell that is. <laughs> and Dr. Jill Biden, our new first lady, the first Italian American uh, uh, first lady. Karen was the first one to tell me that. Uh, I was super excited to hear. Uh, we're hoping that uh, Dr. Biden also agrees with us. It's called sauce. So here is my interview with the great Karen Ponzio. I hope you enjoy it. And joining me now is author, reporter, teacher, and friend, Karen Ponzio. KP, how you doing? Hi, Nick. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for being here. You're like the first adult I, I, I have on the show, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. I, I know. <laughs> it's, it's meant to be complimentary. Compl <laughs> Thank you. It's meant to be a compliment, but for some reason, right when we started, I was like, oh, it's like, oh, an actual adult is on the show this time. <laughs> because I'm, I've been interviewing my mostly friends, so mm -hmm. I just feel like uh, we're all just a bunch of nimwit uh you know boys a bunch of boys no there's there's been one girl you're the second female oh, okay cool you're cool, the second awesome. female uh but yeah mostly it's 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 been like you know the boy yeah me and the boys i guess but okay. uh thanks for coming on oh, i've been welcome. trying to i want to make sure that uh i get you know a whole um a whole palette of new havenites and 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 people of the sort i want to get a whole uh you know i want to i want a melting pot here i want all different kinds of people to be on the show otherwise it'll be boring and predictable so already i feel like this conversation is going to be different because <laughs> you are not you are not a musician so already i, I feel I, I feel trademark i know i feel like uh things are going to be so much more enjoyable <laughs> but how you doing how's everything going it's been a few weeks since i've seen you so yeah i mean yeah so i saw you at uh, i covered the show that you were in at yeah. uh, florian yeah, there my, my on return. chapel street the yeah, return yeah. of the jazz brunch. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, a, a bunch of things have restarted. They've started some new, new types of shows. So I've been here and there. I mean, I'm absolutely not out as much as I used to be because there isn't as much stuff as there used to be. I mean, sure. it's just, you know, common sense. Um, but, you know, I'm trying to, you know, Brian and I are trying to get to, what we can and, and keep up with things, uh, things that are going on in New Haven and, and interviews and talking to people. I actually haven't done any, I haven't done an interview in a while, but you know, that's another one. Even, even not during COVID there's bursts of things. Like there's sure. always this burst of when, I mean, and you know, like people yeah. seem to come out, like mm -hmm. there's this lull over the summer and then there's this burst of albums coming out. And then some people try to get albums out before the end of the year. So there might be another burst in like November December. Um, it follows yeah, like just, the school semesters. It's like uh, the the dead, <laughs> the dead winter and the dead summer are yeah. are the quiet. Those are the quiet times. Yeah. 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 I mean, we're just really trying to stay on top of what people are doing. I mean, there's you know, sure. live. We've done some live streams. We've done some live shows. We've uh, there's been all. Some people have been really creative um, and tried some different things that have been fun. And you know, I. I always like just talking to people about what they're doing, um, mm -hmm. whether it was during this or not. So, and everybody's, you know, there. This is one thing where every like a hundred percent of people are going through it. So you can't say it's like, oh, it's just just this group or just. Oh that yeah, group. yeah, like, it's no, totally collective. Yeah. Every single person has been affected by this. So, and some people talk about it more than others. You mm -hmm. know, and I've had a couple of people say, well, do you just want to talk to people about COVID all the time? And I'm like, we're not just talking about COVID all the time. We're talking about what we're doing, but it, it has to come up. Right. I well, mean, what we're doing is based on the fact that COVID exists. You know, a, a yeah. buddy of mine was like, don't talk about COVID too much because people are going to want to tune in as a, as, a, as a distraction. And I'm like, yeah, that's the goal. But, you know if it wasn't for the pandemic, I definitely wouldn't have started this and we're all going through it, which, you know, it, it, it makes things a little bit easier. You don't have to skirt around the issue. Cause it's not like I'm talking to a specific survivor of a specific event. It's like, right. You could just throw a rock and you'll hit someone. And therefore that, per, you know, and, and that person yeah. 
experiencing it because they exist. So yeah, yeah. it's, it's, it's one of those things where you just, you just can't get around it. Um, and when you, you mentioned Brian, you mean Brian Slattery. Uh, yes. just, you know, I just want to clarify for anybody and in both you guys, you guys are what, like the, the, the a team arts <laughs> reporters for the new Haven independent. Right. And, and, arts council or just the independent no so brian is the editor the arts editor so he's right, the editor right. of that section of the independence is arts figure the arts and culture section so he's sure. the editor and i he does he has something in there nearly every day mm -hmm. so he's not only the editor but he's like their brother primary reporter primary gotcha, journalist gotcha. and then i technically i'm a freelancer so i usually have something in once a, for a while there i had something in twice a week um when there was stuff to be in there twice a right. week. right i mean you're um, saying you're saying this i'm like really that's that's interesting to hear <laughs> considering how often i would see your name in the in, you know in uh, the authorship of the article you know yeah yeah there's a few other people that absolutely uh report on um report on arts and culture and there's like somebody right now who's been doing like poems and um every oh, cool. so often there's play so there's definitely other people who do it uh for a while there it was like brian and i were just i was we were really just like hitting it like <laughs> every i had two a week he had you know, we were just yeah. hitting shows like crazy no i know was, like, crazy I, I I would sh I would show up to a show and you would be there and and you would give me this like I've been up for five and a half days straight uh you know this is my seventh show of this evening and I just and I'm like that's hey do we gonna do it? no offense taken I, I mean sometimes I'm like when I would get a night off I would be like oh finally I could just sit around on my ass and do nothing and to think that you're just going to show after show after show it just it goes to show that both, I mean, you and Brian are just like, you guys are awesome. You, I mean, uh, you guys, no, no, no I, I really appreciate it. Uh, what you do. And I know that everyone involved knows how much hard, knows the hard work you guys do. I mean, you guys really hustle. There is like not a show that's not covered or, or if it's not covered, it's usually like there's a follow up, you know, yeah, where, where you guys yeah. reach out or something. Yeah, I think, and again, of course, that's changed, but I think, yeah. well, I got the job. Part of, part of the reason I got, part of the reason I got the job is because I was just out all the time. So I was out at shows all the time sure. just, just because I, you know, lo, you know, long story short, I was trying to make up for lost time and I just got, I loved going to everything and I would be out yeah. like four, four or five nights a week sometimes. And, mm. um, once I started, once I started actually reporting, I still wanted to go out to shows. You know, I had a lot of friends. I host open, you know, I ended up hosting a couple open mics, um, yeah. hosting right, right, right. different shows for different people. So, so we were both out, not only were we covering, but I was performing and or, you know, performing or hosting or just going to see shows that I didn't want to miss. Yeah. And that, or I was interested in, and then Brian's out performing, you know, so there would be this thing where people like, Hey, KP, and they want to hang out with you. And I'm like, no, I'm, wor I'm, I'm this working. is cool, but I'm yeah. working. So <laughs> yeah. it, I had a, sometimes it was, sometimes it was difficult to be, to be that person because it was like, I don't want, you know, I'm, I don't want to say, oh, I'm a nice person. I don't want to be rude to anybody. I specifically do not want to be rude to my friends, yeah. you know, or people I haven't seen. And then you go out and, you know, you're, you're taking video or you're doing your writing and they're like, hey, me. Right. Well, I think <laughs> like, at this, in I a mean, minute. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at this point, everybody knows, I think. So, uh, you know, I, I feel like that's a hurdle you don't have to worry about. Get as a much, couple maybe. drinks in people. Oh, uh, yeah. I guess you're right. I gonna, guess. I guess you're you right. Know, it, it's not, and again, it's not a negative thing at all. It's not a criticism. It's just, it got things, it was awesome, but occasionally mm -hmm. it would get difficult because I didn't want to be like, don't talk to me. Yeah. Yeah, I, don't be, I just don't want to be like that, you know, or somebody's like, you know, again, I won't name any names, but like, you know, I'm taking a video at Cafe 9 and somebody walks in front of my camera and they're like, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. hey, and, I'm, <laughs> and right, I just got to yeah. put the thing down and be like, what's up? And they're like, oh, yeah. I missed you. And it's like, it's sweet. It's yeah. actually sweet. Yeah. But it's I'm sure kind it's of all funny. good intentions for sure. <laughs> but it, that's what I'm trying to say. I'm not absolutely, I'm not complaining. It's just, it's, and now, you know, I've had a couple, I've had, you know, where you have so, the shows are so infrequent. Mm -hmm. 
So when you see people, it is, it's like, oh my, like that, we, you know, the Cafe Nine show, they did, Dust Hat did the show on the roof, which yeah. was incredible. I know, I want to get, I want to get to that for, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm that. sorry. No, 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 it's okay, it's okay. I was like, uh, I just uh, hold hold on the details, okay. you know. <laughs> but uh, no, I know I know what you're talking about. Uh, j- just just to interject, um, I talked to Brian maybe like two months ago, and it was the first time I had spoken to him since since before. And we were on the phone for like an hour. I I, I, yeah. I, just, I was like, I'm sorry, man, but I gotta go. <laughs> like like you know. <laughs> I, I, but I was like, it was really nice to talk to you because yes. you, know, you, you, Brian, myself, many, many people we know, we see each other at the, at the, All I, the call, time. I call it the circuit. It's the, it's the New Haven clubs. Uh, mm-hmm. It's, it's there, you know, there's no reason to not see, uh, what, you know, someone who's out and about like, like at one of them at any particular night, any right. particular time. So, you know, you, so even though like I have mostly a professional relationship with Brian, like it was the first time I got to talk to him. It's like, you know, when I saw you at, at the, at Florian, it was like, I think that, that was the was first time I'd right. seen you. Yeah. Yeah. Since, it was like, like, oh, the house. Got since, like, yeah, like, I know. You know I know. It's like, oh, you know, it's like you, you do that whole thing. And that's the thing I'm talking about. Yeah. It's wonderful. I feel very fortunate to know so many, to be in this community, which so many wonderful kids, you know, New Haven's a city, but it's, it's also tiny. Oh, it you is. Know? It's and, such and a village. Know, yeah. You get to know everybody. So you would see, and again, I'm not going to be like, don't talk to me, you know, but I'd be like, excuse me. And, but now with the shows being so infrequent and you do see somebody, it's like, I made sure I had time you know, of course, this is, I've been doing this four years now, so it's a little different. The first year I was doing it, and yeah. people were coming up to me, I was getting like, oh my God, am I going to get the video I need? Am I going to get the pictures I need? Love up. I, I'm not saying it's nothing now, but I, 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 I can balance it way better now than I could maybe the first year or yeah, so. Yeah, of I course. Well, it. of course. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I remember when I was dating my wife, and she would come to gigs, I would say, look, like, I am so floored and, and flattered that you want to come, but like, don't come alone because I, you know, I'm working. So as much right. as I want to like spend time with you on the set breaks, like I have to, you know, I'm still running the band. I still got to like, sh- you know, uh, schmooze the owner and the staff and, you know, and do my thing. And, and luckily, yeah, you're working. luckily you she, are working. she got it right. She got it, you know, but it's like, it's such a weird thing to say to people who don't understand like, Oh, like you're not playing right now. Why, why aren't you talking to me? It's like, well, I'm, I'm at work. You know, it's almost <laughs> like sometimes I hate the word gig because it, it, they are jobs. And I think like sometimes yeah. they, they get that, you know, uh, there's a loss in translation there, but anyway, yeah. I, I, you know, totally understand what you're saying. Tell me about that cafe nine show because playing on the roof sounds like it was probably super cool. It oh was right God. after the, the sun raw mural was painted, right? Yeah. Well, uh, I'm trying, oh God, you know what date, <clears throat> Months and dates are just like a blur now. Oh, I know. I, I believe know. the Sunra thing was the beginning, end of August, beginning of September, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was, yeah, this was definitely, obviously, obviously after. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was already painted. I thought I saw it. In- oh, it was absolutely already painted. But oh, I okay, can't yeah. remember. I can't remember the exact date. Not that you need the exact dates, but yes. Yeah, so I had yeah. done. The, I had actually done the story about the Sunra. Right, mural. Right. I'd seen a picture yeah. go up and I went there like the next day, quickly got it in because people weren't downtown and weren't seeing, you know, normally people would be driving by, walking oh, by, going to cafe. Any night, other like, time, God. any other time it would have caused car accidents because somebody oh. would have like hit the brakes looking in the rear view mirror. You exactly. Know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the only time it could have gone up when nobody noticed. Right. So, and it, and it went up on like on a weekend and I went on yeah. a Monday and then I think the, maybe the article came out Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, and then this show was on a Friday night. Okay. I yeah. Yeah. Say. It was like a weekend night. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, they had said they would have the food outside and up on the roof and I, you know, and, and they opened cafe nine to like, uh, uh, Eric was in there from weirdo wonderland selling, some stuff so it was like a little event Mm. you know as well so they incorporated a few different things but man to see everybody 
um, that I have to, just to see like Paul and Lori and Jamie yeah. and, and, and Mike on sound and, and the sound was amazing. And then what they did is they projected, they had a, a camera up there and they projected it onto the wall of the building at the far end oh, of that's the so cool. parking lot. So not only now are you looking up at the roof with these guys and you can see them, Sure. But sure. of course it's, you know, it's like what, three floors up, four yeah. floors up, but yeah. then there's this projection there and it was just epic. It was just so, it looked it. you know, I mean, it I, was I, epic. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like I, you know, when I saw the article and I saw the picture, I was like, Oh, just like, yes. Like just something really cool. Even, you know, I didn't get to make the show, but it was like just being able to see the article was, was awesome. Just knowing that it happened because yeah, we've, we talk about, you know, New Haven is a city, but we think of it as a village and we have these, we used to have these epic nights, you know, we almost had so many of them that we, I think, I think we all can agree that we took, we took some of them for granted because there was always something to do. There was always somewhere to go. And this, when I saw the article, it was like kind of a reminder that like, oh, this city is still fucking alive and it's still fucking cool. And it yeah. Oh, yeah. even though, it, it, you know, it wasn't it, like it was in uh, a show I, I would go to or, you know, not wouldn't go to, but it, w- it, it wasn't a show I'd probably catch. But I felt something, you know, I felt like a connection to it. It made me it made me like proud, you know, to be part of it in, 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 in an indirect way, you know. So that was, well, that I was think, awesome I th- coverage. So I thank you. So I think the thing is that on a on a typical Friday night, a lot of people can't go to shows because that, that are in the community because they are also playing shows. So you have yeah. a lot of that where maybe certain people weren't, you know, if you're a musician, you're not, a lot of times you can't hang out at Cafe 9 on a Friday or Saturday because you're playing your own gig somewhere. Oh, yeah. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah, so there's, thi- yeah. there's things like that where, where people have, been. the other thing, the other thing that I always and Brian and I've talked about this a lot, but I've, when you talk to musicians and you don't even have to talk to the musicians, when you go to a show at cafe nine, I'm going to single out cafe nine because this is where I've heard it the most cafe nine under normal circumstances has a show every single night, seven nights a week. Yes. And you'll hear a band up there from wherever and they'll be in between tuning their guitars, you know, your, your stage banter. And they'll be like, I can't, you know, how cool is it that you're, that New Haven, you have music on a Tuesday night, yeah, live music on a Tuesday, Monday yeah. night or a Tuesday night. And, and so I think that when you're saying something like taking it for granted, we have places in New Haven, not just Cafe Nine, you have a multitude of places that you could go to on any, get. listen, I've done stories where I went to three places in one night. Yeah. Yeah. Because there are three places and, and I didn't get to everywhere. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, I've done, I've also done it where I went to best video, like best video cafe, nine, three sheets, you know what sure. I mean? I've done that kind of thing too. Yeah, um, yeah. But if you count them in, but listen, you have, we are so fortunate. Mm-hmm. We are so fortunate, not just with cafe nine again, but the whole community um, to, to not only have had that, but to have people who were in it who are now saying, what else can we do? Yeah. That I think is even more important because nobody just said, you know what? Screw it. Yeah. Yep. Oh, they I know. found all different kinds of ways to do it. When I saw, awesome. Yeah. When I saw Paul was like opening up Cafe Nine again and, you know, he's renting it now uh, as a rehearsal space and stuff. I just, right. you know, I dropped him an email and said, hey, man, I'm just glad to see you on your two feet. Cafe Nine's doors open. And, you know, I, I said, if there's anything that the jazz underground can do, just let me know. Um, that's cool. Yeah. Cause it's like, I, I don't know what I can do, but if he asked for help, I would, I would, I would be there in a second. Same with three sheets, same with, you know, same with Florian, same with all these places. Yeah. Because, yeah it's, it's, it's this, it is this village that makes things happen. And, and you know, and you're absolutely right. You know, you say Monday night, we had, uh, our Monday night series was at cafe nine. Right. You know, and, you, and you would run into um, you, you could run into anybody there. That's the thing. Um, I feel like after all these years, people in, in town know I'm like the, re- the resident jazz guy, I guess, you know, <laughs> and it's like, but like, I'll, I'll, you know, you'll see me, um, you know, my favorite, my favorite band is the write-offs. I, 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 they're great. 
they're fucking awesome. I got to open my band, got to play on the same bill as them by chance. And it was like a dream come true. Cause just like you were saying, I would miss most of their gigs because I was working. And that was the thing. Yeah. It, dro- it drove me nuts. You know, that I would, uh, I'm, I'm, I know for a fact the last two times they played bef- uh, before I was working. And I was just like, God damn it. Of course, the, these are the nights that they're. That oh, yeah. They're playing, yeah. Know? So, mm-hmm. but it, it, that's, that's just the vibe. That's just the way things are down there. And it's, it is something to be very proud of and to constantly acknowledge. I feel like it's not enough and it, you know you just can't say it enough how fucking awesome it is to be a part of it because it's it's such a it, it it's such a village mentality you know to just keep repeating the same theme you know yeah yeah, yeah. and i think and i think the other thing too is that it's not um my impression it always has always been i mean i've been com- coming down to i started coming down to new haven in like 2013 Mm-hmm. I think is when I started coming down in this like phase of, of my life. Yeah. And I mean, there's people the Renaissance that have, phase and the, <laughs> the people that have been, you know, back and, you know, that were there and some of them have moved, some of them aren't, aren't there. And some of them were there, you know, there's newer, uh, newer, younger, um, different people moving in and changing sure. bands and reforming and all that too. And, and through it all, you just see this, like just, just commitment people just kind of like fall for it, like fall in love with it a little, like yeah. it, no matter who it is. And even the people who are like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm done. I don't go out. This isn't like it used to be. And then somebody next to them will be like, shut up. You know, <laughs> but like, the listeners didn't see his, his KP did the jerk off motion. Off camera. No, I didn't. I shrugged. <laughs> I didn't do the jerk off motion. If I, if I did that, you would know I did it. Um, but but yeah, so you would see, so I got that a lot when I first started coming down here is people would be like, oh, do I know you? Are you like from the daily? Did you stay out with the daily? Did you used to hang out at Rudy's? And I'd be like, no, no. And I'd, I have to explain myself for probably about a good year or two. Yeah. I quite often explain myself, but you would hear um, different people who've been in the scene a, a while being like, oh, it's not like it used to be. Oh, and then somebody would be uh, like, yes, yeah. it is. You just don't go to shows. And then they would like start going back and forth. And it was all in fun. Sure. But sure. I would just sit back and like listen to it. And, think, and I'm telling you that's and that's again what I was doing. I was sitting there with my notebook mm-hmm. and just writing. And yeah. I would listen to people talk and I got to know people. They would start to, oh, you're writing. Your penmanship is beautiful. Or, oh, have you ever seen this band before? You know, and I just start talking. And that's how I met. And, you know, then I started participating in the sh- in shows. And I, like, the words of music that that uh, Margaret did, I got into after Get to the Point. When Get to the Point was on hiatus, that's where I started. And then words of music, once I started, she had me host it for a while. Yeah. I got to know even more. And it just, it just, like, went down this line of just having conversations with people. Yeah. And yeah. everybody just had, there's just this almost constant uh like cheering section for people even the people like okay. i said even yeah. those ones even those ones who are like ah it's it's over there would be somebody right then and there would be like you know what you're talking about like they they just always are for i don't know it's they it just there's something there's, people just fall, fall in love with it and have a thing yeah. have a, a soft spot for it and it's kind of nice it's kind of it's kind of sweet actually. Well, it's it's revitalizing, you know, like I I wouldn't want it the opposite where people just, you know, just give up the cattiness and, and the yeah. com- compet I've never really seen I mean again, the whole not a musician thing and I've been saying that for years and you know, I that's why I kid I say trademark I'm going to get a shirt that says not a musician on <laughs> it. Um but but maybe it's from part of it that is from not being a musician, but I've never I've never had a sense of like a competitive edge or a cattiness or a, oh why is he playing why are they playing and not us kind of thing i've never yeah. and listen i've heard a lot of stuff i could write three books of the stuff i've heard <laughs> i bet behind the scenes and i you know and even when i went you know when i wasn't working and stuff but i've really you don't you don't hear that you just no you, you really you don't. don't you don't and uh that's what i was trying to that was the environment i was trying to uh uh 
nurture at three sheets on Tuesday nights. It was that was a that's yeah, you know, that was a because, lot of weekends. Tuesday nights, yeah, in New Haven. I know, fucking a, packed, packed. It's a jam. It's a it's, jam. Yeah, yeah, it was. It, I mean, packed like sardines is such an understatement. Um, but I've said on the show a few times is that like you know my my uh, my tongue in cheek comment is that jazz musicians are naturally self destructive and. and <laughs> And, and all this sort of stuff but there, a lot of that there's a lot of there's a lot of like toxic culture in 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 the in the jam session scene it's it's mm-hmm. it's based on it's based on competition it's based on you know having an idea of what you think the music should be and i want and and more more often than not it turns away excellent musicians from participating or going mm-hmm. so that was one of the things that i wanted to make sure didn't happen at three sheets you know, right. if there was somebody who was acting like a, a fucking idiot, I would, I would, <laughs> I would say something that I knew would get back to them. I would, <laughs> I would do it in a passive aggressive way. Um, Not just, you, Nick. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, you know, the thing is, is that the way I saw it was, if I tell it to him in person, it might start a fight. I don't want to, I don't want that to happen because then I'll look bad starting a fight in a in a bar I love so much. But I would just be like, hey, you know, you guys are friends with this person. Tell them if he doesn't know, learn how to act like an adult, don't come back, you know? Oh, and, you're and doing I that know, Italian mom thing, Nick. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Tell well, you would know. <laughs> tell your brother. Yeah, tell your exactly. Brother. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We're both pointing at each other right now. <laughs> right now in the video, we're both pointing at each other um, <laughs> with the open palm, the open turn to 11 o'clock. Thumb, thumb to the sky, so, Pom. You so know exactly what I'm talking Zoom. about. Yeah, uh, I just want everyone to know what it looks like uh, in the audio world. But yeah, no, I would, I would do it in the Italian mother passive aggressive manner, where I would be like, you know what, I'm not going to cause a scene, so I'm going to tell him. You tell your brother. You tell. <laughs> I'm fine. Active. They can I'm come fine. back. They can come back when they decide to stop hurting my feelings. You know, like, <laughs> but but oh but in, in all in all reality, it was it was to keep. The negative vibes out it was it was right you know and 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 i've said this before if you went to the jam session you knew it worked you saw what it was it was yeah. probably the most open and welcoming uh session i've ever been to i i had never been to one that was so active and i mean oh we were entering let's see 2020 was probably our third year fourth year maybe one or the other um, third or fourth want- year 2020 i want to say maybe i i hate to be like i'm telling you about your own show <laughs> no, but I but i want to say i reported i started doing this in 26 the end of 2016 and you i know i started report, yeah i know i reported on the very first one so it had yeah, to be in 2017 yeah yeah so third year and i mean standing room only i was lucky if i got on one or two songs because i I never wanted to hog the the stage i wanted people to know that they were welcome and i I mean if i got on one tune it was it was a busy night for me you know because it was always fucking packed it was just that first night you that first night it was packed and it was the first you the the first night of something that was sure awesome and you know and again talking uh, wrapping back to what we were talking about before you would see non-jazz musicians show up i would see you i would see brian i would see you know metal mark lion he would come in um (laughs) you know somebody you know somebody else from uh from a band or another venue or something you you would see them come in and hang out and they knew they knew what was going on on tuesday night there which was so fucking great you know i I know i know we'll get back there one day but it's like i long for it so much and that's kind of why that's that's kind of why, like, that's the thing I, I kind of won't do because it's so sac- uh, sacred to me. Um, and it's just not safe. <laughs> but, but uh, well, you know, yeah. I didn't want to live stream anything that was connected to that because I was just like, no, this is right. this is our this is our holy shrine. And it's yeah. going to stay and it's going to stay secure and safe until it's until it's OK to go back. And then and then we'll, you know, then we'll do it again because. Uh, that and I, I just think that like jam sessions in general were probably a bad idea to have, even if they were outside or something. Yeah, I'm trying to think like in in terms of things that you can live stream and that carry over. And I know some people who were very against live streaming because they felt it wasn't going to convey the, you know, convey what it or you know, even watching them like, oh, I'm not going to watch that on there. I don't want want to do that and. Um, I think some of them have been done very, very well. 
Yeah. Um, I think a jam session, I don't know, but getting that many people around and the, the nature of a jam session, how that would, how that would even work, you know, because even if you're live streaming, you're still, if you have 12 people in a room, you know, it's still, you know, can you, can you do it with three or four? Yeah. I don't know. But then I it's mean, not, like, yeah. I, yeah, I hear it. I don't know. Yeah. I was I was the same way like at the beginning, uh, like I'm I'm cool with the live streaming. Like we had the mind the we have the mind the hang series. We have it coming right. up this this week. The band is is all together. I was I'm not cool with the the four separated five separated squares like the Brady. Gotcha. Band, yeah. Yeah. You know? Okay. Because and 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 that that to me seemed like a futile effort. And that was more so in the beginning of things. And and at that point, I was like, look, let's just reflect. Let's do an inward you know, meditation on what, <laughs> on, on what's going on. We don't need to pretend like things are okay yet. And that, so I was never, I was never cool with that. And then since I've been remote teaching, I know it sucks. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like with that, I, I, I pre-record all my lessons. I don't, I, I don't try to like play the piano and sing and try to hear the kid, kids come back. I tell them stay muted. I'm going to play the lesson video and then on my other device, I watch them and I could see them doing like, I could see their lips moving and their hands and mm -hmm. stuff. And I'm like, that's all I need to know that they're engaged because otherwise we're just, we're just trying to fool each other. You know, we're trying to kid ourselves. And that's what that zoom Brady bunch style playing was like for me. It was like, we're just, we're just kidding ourselves about the reality of things, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think you, I, my feeling with all of it, um, I mean, now we've been doing this for over six months. Yeah. <laughs> so <Like eight. laughs> it, it seems, and it feel, you know, and people, it feels like four years, but, yeah. but the idea that people have tried things. So I think you, I, I'm going to say it's, it's not any different than anything else you do as an artist. You try something. And if it works for you, great. And if it doesn't work for you, then don't do it again. Like I'm very, sure. I'm very adamant about that. So we were very fortunate in the community to have so many options. So we had everything from solo to duos to these, you know, look at, look at the state house, the jam they were having at the state house where yeah. it was like wall to wall people and like 15 people on stage for three hours and it was that was epic in an event i mean listen there was everything there was there was there was one to to that many and can we do all that online probably not right can right. we do other things online absolutely yeah. um do are you enjoying what you're doing you, only you are going to know that so if you mm -hmm. do something and you try it and you're like you know what this sucks. I never want to do this again, yeah. but let me try something else. And then you find a way. I, I mean, who's better at that than artists yeah. to find another way. It's like, that's, that's the whole thing. You're creative, right? You innovate, you create, you know, like that's if, if ever, I felt like with all of this since March, the idea of trying to pretend it isn't there um, I'm not saying you have to, you know, every other word out of your mouth has to be COVID, but to pretend it's not there is another problem. We can't, oh, we got to find this, we got to find this place. So I think the idea of people trying all these different things and seeing what works, I mean, it's no different than let's try having this show at three sheets on a Thursday night and see if it works. And some of them do, and some of them don't. Yeah. You know, oh, no, I, series, not every series has been around for 20 years. You know course. what I mean? They, they come I, and go, they come and go because people come and go because ideas come and go. So mm -hmm. right now we unfortunately are being forced to, <laughs> we're being forced to think in a way that we weren't planning on being forced into doing. So. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you. One. Yeah. It's just, you know, you got to acknowledge it because it is this strange ev event that's happening to all of us. And so it, it has to be acknowledged. And yeah, in the, in the artwork, the music, it's going to reflect it 100%. You know, it makes me think about, um, you know, uh, Dmitry Shostakovich, the great Russian composer was like mm -hmm. writing music at the, t at the, you know, he was living in the Soviet union under Stalin. Like he's writing music as his family is being put into gulags 
you know, because his last piece was not considered Russian enough, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. Um, you know, think about all the art that came out in any kind of, uh, you know, uh, oppressive era. Granted, it was more external. I guess this is still external. I don't know, but I guess it's a different kind of external, but it's a, definitely along those lines where there's going to be a whole era. There's a whole period of work that's going to be COVID work. You know, I was just saying on the show, like, there's going to be a shitload of albums coming out next next year, next spring, next summer. Tons of music. I've been on Nick, one. A shitload of albums came out this year. I mean, yeah, there was yeah. stuff coming out. There was stuff. I had two. I was reporting on two records coming out with tours when this all broke, and I had to go back. And it was a uh, Sam from uh, Elson Jackson, and then Moody Black from Minnesota that were coming to play at the State House and are under Fake Four. They're on the Fake Four um, label. And Chesky was, was going to be, there was this big show planned at State House and then it was going to be, they were going to Europe. Mm -hmm. And then all this happened and I have these two stories sitting and I'm like, okay, let me call them. Can you, can you talk again? And they're like, now yeah. We, now like, we got to okay, update the story. Yeah, let's yeah. talk about what you're going to do. And if they were still coming out with the records because they, it was, they were no way not going to, they weren't going to shelve these records. I mean, for Sam, I think it was a single leading to an album with Moody Black. It was an entire album. It was going to be a European tour. Then in the middle of all that, I happened to touch base with our friend Paul Bell Busty. And he's like, hey, I made an album. I'm, I was going to put it out this week. What do you think? And I'm like, let's wink, wink, nudge, nudge. It? That scoundrel. I'm like, you want to talk about it? And like, yeah. like not even kidding you. I talked to him on a, I talked to him on a Wednesday, wrote it on a Thursday morning. And I think Brian put it out on Thursday night or Friday morning because the record was, he was putting the record yeah. out for, for the band camp Friday. And it was like, a, we just, a, you adapt. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. And I say, oh, we, yeah. oh yeah. And I say we, because it's creative, it's being creative. I think it's what helped us with school. So, you know, I, I teach at ECA. Yep. I started teaching at ECA last September. Mm -hmm. So I am a new, brand new to the, you know, and we're, we're teaching artists at ECA. So it's different than being in a public school and in in like, you know, in a regular, like if I was in North Haven High or Hamden High or whatever. But, you know, my, you know, six weeks into the spring semester, this happens. And they're like, oh, you know, all these teachers, you guys, poor guys, you have to change everything around. I go, well, I have to change, I have to change everything around because I just, <laughs> so I was like, I can be flexible. I've been flexible from day one. Yeah. Um, and I'm not joking. It's, I'm not totally joking there because I didn't have 10, 20 years of teaching behind me to, to scrap. I just was like, okay, tell me what we, tell me what we have, what we're doing. Okay, we're doing every this day. We're doing Zoom. Zoom's this new thing. Try the Zoom. Okay, we yeah. Google Classroom. Okay, I'll try. You know, but I I really believe that people who are creative, artistic, create whether you want creatives, artists, whatever you want to label us, people like us. Um, I think we're. I think we do well with that. I think we do well with innovating and changing and adapting. Um, granted, uh, I know there's some people who will say, well, you know how musicians are, you know how writers are, <laughs> and they're, oh, you know, they got to be seen and they want, they need attention and all that stuff. And okay. But I still think those people are going to do things and create things to make that happen. I just, maybe, I, I don't know. People think I'm a little, sometimes think I'm a little like, you know, I'm a very enthusiastic person. I'm a very, no, you hopeful, are, you are very hopeful person. Yeah, you are hopeful. You are enthusiastic. You're very positive. That's why I, I like that I'm friends with you because, <laughs> you know, I, I definitely don't want the opposite. <laughs> if I were, you know, if this conversation was the exact opposite of, what, what, of how it's going, I, I would have to can this episode. It's so this, this is what people, <laughs> people need to hear this. And, you know, and, and it's funny, um, on the previous episode, I had my friend Ryan, and he, I remember talking to him maybe in April or May and he was like, and he's a drummer. Mm -hmm. And this is when everyone started like writing and, and releasing uh, the first wave of their, of their, you know, creative output of being locked away. And he's like, I am not motivated to play the drums. And I said, dude, 
No one said you had to. We are all going through something very traumatic. It's okay if you just want to watch TV. It's fine. And and I think like in a weird way, he needed to hear that because like oh he, sure. You know, you know, cause he was like, Oh, thank God. <laughs> like, thank God that I don't have to be super creative. And it's like, no, not everyone has to be, you know, I think after eight months, more of us are becoming it because now it's like, all right, well now we got to adapt. You know, I had my time to hunker down. That's how I felt. I was, you know, I've been writing up a storm mostly since August, as opposed mm-hmm. to the whole time when I was home. Right. Uh, you know, I, I only felt the creative energy like towards, more recent months Mm -hmm. and that's same you know yeah and but you know you're absolutely right like tons of stuff got released during during this period the uh you know uh the covid era will probably be like 2020 to 2023 in terms of artistic output i think and i mean just myself I'm, i'm booking i'm booking firehouse 12 in december and january two separate projects and I'm hoping by the time the January project's done, I can go get back in there in maybe February or March and do a third project. And all, because I'm, I'm almost done writing for it. And all three are different. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of nice. Awesome. Right. Well, it's kind of nice to have that time to, you know, I'm finally like able to pursue the things that like have totally been on the back burner because, you know, playing straight ahead and my electric stuff, that's like my bread and butter, but all right. the avant-garde random weird stuff you've seen me do or, or that mm-hmm. I've done and people don't know about now it's getting its, its opportunity to come to the, to the forefront because there's, I'm not, I'm not working every weekend. I'm not, I'm not out Thursday through Sunday night now. And, and that's a, that's another big thing that the people that, you know, the, a lot of the artists and performers who, you know, spend all, you know, had these uh, jobs during the day or these other jobs outside of the music and art that went on a hiatus or they complete, you know, they got completely laid off, you know, and, and were on unemployment or whatever. And now they're like, okay, what am I doing? And they had the time. And then there were some people who were like, you know what? I, I don't have it in me. I mean, I've had a, I had a couple students say to me, you know, I haven't written anything. I, I'm a writer's block. And I'm like, it's, it, listen, I know adults who do this for, who've been yeah. doing this for 30 years, who have, a, you know, you got, you know, we're, we're in this together. Um, I think that um, it's, it's, there, people are going, let me put it this way. People need to hear all the stories i'm i'm yeah, a firm yeah. maybe because i'm a writer and i'm biased but i think that we need to have all of those stories because every story even though the common thread through through them is the quarantine and the covid the stories are different and i mean i've reported a lot of them i've talked to a lot of people and 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 you hear different you know you hear different perspectives and they maybe they're all musicians, but they're not all the same person. They're yeah. not having the same experience, you know. And, right. and listen, I I've said to people myself, I'm like, listen, bored. I wish I was. When am I going to be bored? I I was not bored for five minutes since this started. I oh yeah, same. I and I don't want to. And that's not. And I and I say this a hundred percent. That is not a brag, because what no, happened no, is we not. had no. We had that those two weeks. And then school started again remotely. I had to learn how to do all these things. Um, we started with all these stories, and I'm so grateful that I had two jobs. Yeah, yeah. Where I was still able to work and make money and be creative and yeah. and help people and all that. But the people who are like, "I'm so bored. I'm so bored." Every so often, I'd be like, "Can I just be bored for a day? Like, right, I would right. just. Can I just be?" Like, oh my God, that's, I would just love to have nothing to think about for just a day. And I, and I've gotten better. I think I've gotten better at that because there's a fatigue level that comes with this. That's different. There's a different fatigue from living in this COVID world than there is from staying out till two in the morning, three nights a week. Yeah. Huge difference. The only time I was like lethargic and lazy quote unquote, um, was those two weeks, you know, March 13th through April, you know, at the beginning of April yeah. remotely because yeah, they, they, you know, they told us, give the kids what you can. We're going home. We're going to go from there. And that's yeah. what happened. And, and luckily I'm techie as it is. My, my class was remote 
with me being in front of the kids, you know, like nothing, I got you. really nothing has changed except for I'm physically not in front of them. So, so the transition was really easy for me because I'm already like kind of, you know, I already use videos and, and, and YouTube and, and stuff like this. So, so learning Google classroom was like just one thing I had to yeah, do. Google classroom was it, was it, it's not that's, even that's fine. Yeah. yeah it's Google not even classroom bad. is fine. And, but yeah. I, I mean, I think that, I think the thing too, though, is that two weeks, nobody knew anything. Yeah. So, well, you know, I it was mean, far scarier I, back then, you know, yes, I mean, so it's scary you, now, we, but. We, it's a, yeah, it's a, and the levels of scary have changed, but that two weeks, and I remember me going like, this is just like the stand. And I'm like, you didn't read the stand. <laughs> if you're saying it's like the stand, because this in the stand, you know, do you read the stand? Well, so here's the thing. I'm a huge Stephen King fan, but, yes, we, uh, but through the dark tower, I've not gotten to the stand yet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm on the tiny read, knockers right now. Oh, I read that when that came out. So see, okay. I'm, I'm wait. The, th the other reason that the other reason listeners at White Nick's calling me an adult because I'm way older than them. So, <laughs> I did not mention anything <laughs> about meant, age. I'm saying that. <laughs> so, so when I was a teenager, sure. And I, so the stand was the was the stand and it were like those two, you know, that they're like this, you know, thick. Oh yeah, like yeah. That's why I haven't thick, gotten to them yet. Thick as anything, but you, right. but I would sit up and and the stand was fascinating to me, and it was terrifying because and i'm not i don't think i'm giving anything away here but the whole they're coming out with the mini series actually they they're, are they're, which looks, which looks yeah. amazing um but the idea was that this virus this disease got out and people were dropping so yeah. it was like it it like cleared out a, a a percent of the population so that happens immediately so the thing with this is that nobody knew it wasn't like people were dropping and people didn't know, like people were going hospitalized, but then wait, people could maybe be infected and not know it. And people could be asymptomatic. And that was the scariest they, part. They yeah. And so nobody knew it, not that people in the stand knew, but people were like, you would get it. You would get like violently ill and die. You know what I mean? This yeah. was, this was so precarious. Nobody knew anything about it. So yeah. That sitting around and like kind of waiting, like, well, are we leaving the house? Are we going to get it? Should we leave? To, are we going to, we were going to get it whether we leave the house or not. Can we eat anything? Can we touch our groceries? So yeah. there were that, that two weeks was just, it was a different kind of scary. And then it was that, do, then it changed. And then it was like, oh, we can go out, but do we go out? all the time do we right. not go out do we go inside do we not do we go outside i mean even the first day of school was just that first day of school for us like i'm, I'm in person one day a week oh wow see we, we don't go back in until the ninth so yeah i yeah. uh EC, yeah eca i'm i'm in i'm there one the day that they wednesdays is the day i teach so that's the day they're open for creative writing so ah. my saw my uh the director he teaches and i teach and then thursday i do zoom Oh, I do okay. all Zoom okay. from home. So that first day going in too, it was like, well, how is this going to be? And my kids are great. My kids, they, they keep their masks on. They listen to everything. Well, they're, you got, you got older kids, right? I mean, those are older kids. Yeah, they're high school kids and school they want to be there, right? It's not like they uh, want yeah. to be there. Right. So they're going to want to be there, yeah. See, see yeah. That's, where, that's where I, you know, it, what makes me nervous is I, my school has 500 kids between right. kindergarten through eighth grade they all have to come to me. <laughs> so I know there's going to be kids who figure out if I take off my mask, they'll kick me out of class and I'm going to have kids doing that. And I, and, and that's what scares me, to be honest with you. That's, that's the next fear for me is the kids who refuse to be safe. And I've, you know, they said they're giving me a face shield. I bought this like welder's mask. You got to see it. It's mm -hmm. like something a ghostbuster would wear. Because I'm like, no, man, I am not taking the chances. And when you talked about uh, the stand, it makes me think of the book. Uh, do, do you ever read anything by Jeff Long? He wrote. I don't um, think so. He only wrote a couple of books. Um, I don't know if he's still around or not, but uh, he wrote a book called Year Year Zero, and it's kind of the same thing. It's this like virus uh, that hasn't been seen by humans since the you know uh, the time of Christ. You know? Oh, okay. And it like, like ancient. 
Yeah, it's a, it's an ancient virus and it like decimates the population. And so like in order to find the cure, they're like, well, we had to have survived it 2000 years ago. So they go to Golgotha, they find all these bones and they clone people from, from oh, the bones. So then there's a guy who- That claims, never works out. <laughs> so there's a character who claims he's Jesus Christ. And so like that's- Oh, wow. Oh, I gotta go back sounds- and read those books. Yeah, he, he they were like- um, Sci- sci-fi action he's uh you know the movie the descent oh yeah it's based on his book of the same name oh, however the movie no. is nothing like the book the book is like uh more like the movie aliens with sigourney weaver oh right. which i love i love yeah, yeah one of my favorite i love movies. that whole story. i've been watching more scary it's funny i've been watching more scary movies though i've been watching more movies lately well of course and during all this and my you know my husband and i have um we're either really both really love something or it's like we he loves it i hate it i love it he hates it but we uh, i kept having people telling me to watch um hereditary and midsummer so oh I, yeah I so i finally like fucked up <laughs> so we finally watched those and i really I, it's not that i didn't well, okay i'm gonna be right out my husband hated both of them he okay. well no he hated hereditary he didn't sure. like it at all and okay. midsummer he thought was better but too talky he's not a talky movie guy um and he didn't think hereditary was that scary i i liked hereditary but i loved midsummer i I'm loved gonna, i haven't Mid- seen either order oh i loved midsummer okay. so much but, and i and and kind of like my point with all of this is that like it's i almost think i hadn't watched scary movies in forever i watched the well, new yeah, spirit Right, we need new con. We need more content because there's just well, not, there's more time than we, ha- you know. Right, but the other thing I think that kind of happened to me is for a while there, I'm like, you know what? I don't want to see scary movies. I don't want to be put through. For a while there, everything was like torture movies and zombie movies, and I'm like, you know what? I don't always want to watch a bunch of gore and a bunch of crap. And I, I'm just, it's just, it's not entertaining watching somebody like you know like get tortured for two hours in all these different ways, like with saw yeah. and all that. I'm not, I'm, enter- yeah. I'm not into the torture porn stuff like Saws and, and Hostel. Yeah, and I don't like, like that, that stuff. But- I like zombie movies. I think that's cool because well, the idea of a brainless monster just eating, that's that's scary. You well, know, that's some scary. of them, yes. Some yeah. of them might some of them are better than others, obviously. But right. I think what happened in this is I don't even want to say like I don't want to say like I got a little numb to it, but I feel like we're in this constant state and you try to like bring it down a little, but I'm like okay, I'll watch a scary movie. Why not? Like, we're maybe before yeah. I'd be like, well, I don't want to be put in that frame of mind. Now it's like, like, seriously, every day is, a, every day is some kind of thing in the news or you hear another thing and you're not sure what's going on. And you're like, I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'll watch. So I watched Suspiria the other night, which they're the new Suspiria, not the yeah. old Suspiria. I've seen the old when one. I a, yeah. When I was a kid, that scared the shit out of me. Right. But this one didn't scare the shit out of me, but it was still kind of, it was whoa. It was yeah. I liked it a lot. Okay. But it's like I think that's the frame of mind now. It's like I want to be. I'm saying I want to be scared, but it's like I. No, you want to feel something. <laughs> I'm just like you know what? I'm okay. This isn't. Yeah. Gonna, I this isn't gonna keep me up at night. There's other things to keep me up at night. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. I mean, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, there's there's actual things to scare you. So the scary content is not that bad because right now life is pretty fucking scary so you just you just don't know and i mean here's the thing i don't have little kids around my kids are 22 and 25 right. and uh both of my kids were in new york when all of this was wow bad i mean my our oldest lives our oldest lives in new york yeah um, yeah he's been there he went to nyu and he he's right been I, knew, I knew that yeah yeah and then my uh our youngest just graduated in may and then he was staying there and he he's he's home mostly now but you know the idea of your you know they're not little kids but your kids aren't around and like we're they're adult okay they're adults but are they going to be okay you're still always i'm still an italian mom i'm still going to worry about my kids i'm not calling them every day going what are you doing but i'm 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 not that italian mom but right right you still think of them so people are like well aren't you scared that your kids are in new york and I'm, i'm like well sometimes when i really think about it yeah but it they, I would be scared if they were home too. Like they're right. my kids. Well, that, I don't want my kids to get sick. Right. There's that, and you know, and the fact that it's it's everywhere. So they're just you know 
it's, it's kind of it's kind of fucking dark to say that, but it's like I mean, at the end of the day, it, well, yeah, you know, it's no riskier than being here. You know, it's it's based on your conduct if you are okay, basically, right? You know? So you know, that's that's the 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 weirdness to it, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've just I've just tried to be as careful as I can. I, it's not like I don't go out. Right. I go out. No, I try it. to keep my, you know, I keep my mask on. I do what I got to do. Um, I, you know, I come from healthcare, so the hand washing thing was not. I was actually kind of shocked that people needed that much instruction in hand washing. I'd be like, "What yeah. are you doing? No- what are you doing normally?" I mean, like, but I mean, in healthcare, we're taught because you have your hands on people. You're around people in and out of. You know, healthcare is just different than every day, but also. Were people just never washing their hands? No, like people were not. That That's the thing. But I <laughs> we guess were, people just weren't washing their hands. We were ding, learning. Ding, ding, guess what? We, yeah, we were learning that a lot of people, and some of them we know and love, don't wash their hands. And 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 we all had to have like a review of kindergarten. And it's insane. It's just I feel like I could spend a whole episode talking about how <laughs> this has just magnified my disappointment in, in most of society. Uh, because things you think are so basic, people aren't doing. And I can, right. I can go on for hours and hours and hours. But I don't want to do that because we are coming up on our, on our end, our, the end of the segment here. So Ooh. I want to talk about all good stuff. So <laughs> KP, you, you are a reporter. We've talked about that. But you are an author and you are a poet. So like, t- talk about that stuff. What inspires you? Uh, you know, favorite poets, favorite authors? What, what? You know, where do you get your muses from? All that stuff. Like, let's let's hear about your work. Okay, so part of that I talked about a little bit already about you said about cre- what you've created uh, since this started. And I got to say, I really, in the beginning of all this, I really wasn't, I don't know if it was the preoccupation with other things, but I really wasn't all that inspired to write sure. poetry. So I've been doing that for... Um, regularly again for probably about again since about 2013 2012 okay. a little before that so maybe probably about 10 years and uh i got a lot of my i gotta say i was very inspired by being out when i would oh, again I can sitting imagine. there yeah at the at cafe nine at three sheets at all these different places just sitting there at coffee shops listening to people talking to my friends that's that's like Themes straight out yeah, straight out of the beatnik. Uh, uh, oh yeah, uh, aesthetic. And I and I, I think the thing is with me is that I always loved rhyming poets. Like I fell in love at an early age with like Dr. Seuss and you know that type of rhyming books. And 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 I loved mu. I always loved music. And I would sit and like read the line, you know, read the lyrics and line, you know, of albums and you know get up real close to the radio and hear the words and try to write them down and, and things like that. And the thing is I never played an instrument and I, I want to say that I might be a frustrated songwriter because (laughs) I think if I knew, and I have a piano in my house now, my husband got me a piano. He got a donated piano from a school that didn't want it. Um, And I think if perhaps I knew how to play the guitar or piano or something, I would maybe write songs because my poetry tends to not necessarily, some of it is rhyming, um, but it tends to have a, a, a musical, lyrical quality to it, I think. Okay, I think. okay. I think. My, um, I wrote a lot of odes because I was very inspired by Pedro, uh, uh, pa- Pedro, uh, Pablo Neruda. I was very inspired gotcha. by, I love Walt Whitman. I love Pablo Neruda. Um, uh, I really started getting that was like when i that was like once i was always into walt whitman went away from it came back and then when i got back into poetry again somebody uh, i heard a, a pablo neruda poem and i just was like i i need this in my life like constantly um i find translated poets seem to have a beautiful lyrical quality to them uh uh, Lorca and and, and uh, a lot of again Neruda, but I I I tend now. It's kind of helped me through a little bit through uh, my my parents both died. My pa- yeah, father died yeah. in twenty ten. My mm-hmm. mother died last year. 
Right. It seems like a hundred years ago. Um, but I feel like it's like, it helps me, un poetry helps me understand things. So if I have a thought in my head and it comes out in a line and then I want to explore that, that's what I tend to do. I'm not, a, I'm not a, a, a taught poet. I did not go to school for writing of any kind, um, except for my basic classes in college. And I was in a writing based graduate program, which did a lot of journaling. And I've had some, some um, everything I've taken after the fact. So I've never, it's not like I have a degree in writing. Hmm. And I'm not saying I have to, but I'm just saying that I'm not like, I can, I'm not gonna sit here and say, well, I do, I write, you know, sonnets and I write this and I write that. I just write. And I feel like it helps me put in the thoughts in my head into words in a way that makes what I'm feeling um, more tangible. And I think what helped me with that is when I did start reading my poetry out in New Haven, which was at Cafe Nine, was the first place I read it, is I would read the stuff and people would come up afterwards and say to me, oh my God, like, you're in my head. Get out of my head. Or they would say, oh my God, you like, that last one you read, like, that's me and my boyfriend. That's like wow. me and my ex-boyfriend. And I would wow. be like, cool. Or somebody would say a line and I'd say, can I take that line? And they'd say, yes. Uh, and I would write a poem. And I'd say, I wrote, and I'd go back and like go, I wrote that like, that happened with Sarah Scranton and I. Okay. And I'm like, Sarah, I wrote this poem. And she's like, oh my God. And then another one of my friends who I won't say, who said a, a, a line and I'm like, you said this line, I wrote this poem. And they were like, holy shit, that, how did you know that? And I'm like, mm -hmm. no, what? And they're like, this, I feel like this is about me. And I'm like, I don't know. I just, I just got the, took the line. So there's That's like, amazing. This, there's like this, this need to, this kind of need to be able to reframe or rephrase things like I tell my students like they'll say when we do music right because we do arts journalism I, t I teach journalism so we okay. do art I try to teach them arts journalism because you can't just do d broad journalism and you know there's just too much um and that's where my experience is but they'll say like oh I like this movie well, why why it was amazing and I go don't tell me the movie was amazing it tell me tell me why the movie was amazing paint a picture do the do that show not tell make the person that reads this go wow that sounds amazing mm. you know so the idea is to find another way to just be and i mean we can all say i'm sad or i'm happy or i'm depressed or i'm upset or i you know i'm in love but there's the, that's not a story. That's not a poem. That's not a song. I mean, right. is every song about love? Well, no, <laughs> no, absolutely not. We all no, know, but that. right. Yeah. But a lot of songs are about love. Are they all the same song? Of course they're not. Or is there, right. are, there's a lot of movies about love. Are they all the same? Of course no. they're not. Yeah. So it's yeah. the same thing. Poetry is just the easiest way for me to. Yeah. Well, that's, that's your, that's that. your, that's how you communicate. And that's, and that's yeah. fantastic. That's, that's so great. Uh, what a, that was a wonderful wrap just there. That was, uh, <laughs> that was a wonderful uh, explanation of it. Thank you for, for sharing that because that was, <laughs> it was super good. Um, but so yeah, sweet. no, uh, it, it, it is. I'm so glad you share that with me and I'm so glad you came on the show. I feel like you will be back on it, to have part two because i feel like we could talk and talk and talk we didn't talk about the sauce <laughs> oh i know basically for those of you listening still uh i am of the italian mindset that no real italian calls tomato sauce gravy i think that is the stupidest fucking thing i've ever heard I think it's a regional, I think it's a regional sure. thing though. It's I have, not my region. <laughs> it, but I will, but my, and so here's the thing. I'm not going to be like, nobody does that. I know right. people who do it. Sure, I, I do too. I, but I will tell you that I, I really never heard that until I was an adult. Never in my, and again, I'm going to, you know, I grew up in East Haven. Yeah. My family's all from New Haven. I'm a, I'm a hundred percent Italian descent. Yeah. I never, when the first time I heard the word gravy, I really thought somebody was having 
their macaroni, and I say macaroni more than I say right. pasta too. Right. And I thought somebody was having their macaroni with, with like turkey gravy. Or right, right. Like, gravy like a on brown or, or, or grayish black. <laughs> like, like which is, liquid. which yeah. is like a beef stroke. You know what I mean? Right. People do that. Stroke enough. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And they're like, no, you know, Sunday gravy. And I went, what? And they're like, you, what do you call it? Sauce? And I'm like, well, I know oh, they, they're like, they're I, like, oh, look at the simp here calling it sauce. Like, what are yeah, you talking I, about? But I swear, <laughs> I swear on my mother that I had no clue that that was a thing until I was an adult. And then I had a friend, one of my friends who's from New Jersey was like, that's what we called it. Yeah. We called it gravy. And I'm like, okay, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to listen. I'm not going to argue about it. You want to call it gravy. That's fine. I'm not <laughs> calling it gravy. When you say even... Even now, if somebody says Sunday gravy, my head goes to. Well, I know it. Gravy, yeah, I, right. It just exactly. does. It does. Yeah, I'm. I'm the same way. I, you know, I will accept it. However, I think it's wrong. That's that's the only <laughs> thing. You know, because I come from the Italian family. You know, I'm a, I'm a few generations removed from the immigrant. You know, the, the emigrating De Marias, and so <laughs> our whole thing was. Uh, you know, my, my ancestors wanted to be American. So like w growing yeah. up, I didn't know it was just my family. I really didn't know what was the Italian American part and the, in the, in the assimilated part. So, right. th so the same, once I get, became an adult is when I became way more, um, way more aware of certain things, you know? And, and even now I'm like, you know, it, you know, I, 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 I joke, but I know it's regional because I, I heard gravy like when I was like, in my twenties, and I'm like, uh, that's not what it's called. Never heard. I will never, tell you, I never, never yeah, heard it no. as a kid. And listen, there's certain things you know we kid around, like we go on, you know, obviously you t tell people like we were on social media, things like that. We go back and forth and talk about yeah. these different things. But like somebody put up about stir about stirring the 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 spaghetti, like stirring the sauce in or serving it like no sauce turned. Uh, and putting the sauce on top it, and just the sauce on top and i'm like listen i know people do it but not in my kitchen yeah that's never <laughs> happening in my, yeah that is not happening in my kitchen that's that's basically that's my all wife's I'm gonna say my wife doesn't say that but that's definitely <laughs> like her model her motto is not in my kitchen or it's my kitchen now you know i do it this yeah way. we could do we could do a whole hour on just <laughs> oh, the italian uh, yeah. i mean yeah. i was supposed to have my son we were supposed to do eggplant okay and listen i could do an hour on eggplant parmesan because the the controversy oh okay when people I didn't even know like, there was controversy how do you make your eggplant do you salt oh. it do you peel it do you oh, this boy. do you that and there's this whole and listen uh, listen again i'm a 53 year old italian woman and i grew up around all italian people and i will tell you there's that they all do it relatives friends they all do it they'll say that's how you do your eggplant <laughs> mine's mine's better yeah mine's better Right. Mine's better. Uh, you know, we all we all have our thing with our meatballs. Our I was sauce, just gonna say the, the, in, the in the Di Maria family, it's the meatball conversation. This we just lasagna. We there's just, a whole. There's, yeah, there's we don't all talk the, about it because we don't want to hurt anyone's feelings at this point. <laughs> right, yeah. right. So there's this whole thing going on. And listen, I will listen to what people say. I'm not. I'm not going. I'm not going to fight. <laughs> I'm not going to fight on social I'll, media. I'm not, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to fight. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to, oh, I'll cry. I'll cry right now. I'll cry with anybody. I'll cry a hundred percent. I'll cry with anybody, but, um, but I will not, I won't fight with anybody, but that also means that I am going to stick by what I do. Oh, sure. You could tell me, you could tell me, and this, listen, this is almost like my mantra in life. Do whatever the fuck you want, mm -hmm. but you can't sit there and talk about every uh, people, you know, freedom and to do what you want and, and, and free to think and all these things. And then sit there and tell me I'm wrong because I don't peel my egg or because I peel my eggplant. Like yeah. that's, I'm not going to fight with you about peeling eggplant. Like right. it's just not, I'll laugh, Yeah, but I'm not going to fight, fight with you. I feel like everybody does their thing. And if that's sure. what you have and you love and it's, it's your family and your tradition and it's same thing with music. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to fight with somebody over the top five bands. I mean, nobody's got the same top five bands. We can talk about it. Right. I'll talk about it. Yeah. Right, if I, if I tell you one of my top five bands is the Bee Gees or you, you hate the Bee Gees, you're going to sit there and try to make me hate the Bee Gees. No, and you're, like, and you're fine because I like happen. the Bee Gees. Right. But it's never going to happen. I'm not going to no. change my mind. Yeah. So it's like, I, I want, it's not just about being positive. 
It's about knowing who you are and being like confident in that. I love what That's I beautiful. love. That's beautiful. I love what I love and I want you to love what you love. You want to talk to me about it and we have a conversation and we go back and forth and we laugh and we learn a little about each other and we have a little back and forth. That's awesome. If you're going to sit there and like just pointedly attack me about my musical taste or what I eat or anything else like I'm just gonna I'm first of all I'm probably not gonna I'm gonna we're not gonna have a conversation <laughs> yeah. gonna, if we're in person I'm gonna yeah. walk away right right which right. is why I don't get into these conversations on social media because I just don't get involved that's my yeah. my virtual walking away yeah so I just yeah. think it's too, and especially I'm gonna say it bring it back around especially now mm -hmm. I know exactly what I said there's like going. no time for maybes mm -hmm. like you just gotta do what you love, have what you love, eat what you love, be with the people you love. You know, there's no time because it's just, the, the, there's so many draining things out there we're, we're fighting off constantly. Yeah. And th there's such a level of that. You got to enjoy your, your life. You have to. It's not even about happy or unhappy. You just got to have joy and bliss. I, you know, I went and got popcorn shrimp today. It was Fuck fucking yeah. amazing. <laughs> Good. I haven't had I'm glad you. Yeah. I went to Stu's. I'm like, I want popcorn shrimp. And Good. it was great. And I, I'm, maybe I won't have it again for a year. But I'm like, yeah, that's what life is like now. Good for you. Good yeah. for you. Well, KP, <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely, that's, 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 there's no way we're topping that. So on that, <laughs> on that, it is always a pleasure to talk to you. It's always oh, a pleasure running into, running into you. Thank you so much for coming on the show, being the first oh, adult, so the first adult. <laughs> The podcast i appreciate that it's not an age thing it's a wisdom thing i swear oh, but so thank sweet. you so much stay safe tell joe and your, you and your boys to be to be safe and um, yeah love you know, to your family yeah, too thank you thank you and uh i'm sure i'll see you soon and uh oh yeah keep fighting the good fight for us so i will you keep keep playing i will all right thank you so much you're welcome dear Yeah, man. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning into that episode and that interview. I, I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. And, you know, I'm now six episodes in and I have to say this has been such a fun project. Um, I can't stress enough how cathartic this has been for me. Uh, being able to talk to friends, being able to catch up with those that I can't see. Uh, and, uh, just have great conversations, man. Like, you know, I, I, I am grateful for that. And as we enter the, uh, Thanksgiving season, I want to let you know that, uh, if I play music with you, if I interact with you regularly, uh, in my artistic, uh, endeavors, I appreciate you. And if you're listening to this, I appreciate you even more because <laughs> without an audience, what's the point right now? Um, no, I really appreciate all of you. And I hope that, uh, for this Thanksgiving season, you can spend it with uh, those you love safely. Uh, I hope that you stay healthy and safe. And uh, let's look out for each other as, uh, you know, COVID is still with us. And uh, that light is at the end of the tunnel. We'll get there. But, uh, you know, till then, we got to stick together. So thank you so much. This has been Mr. Millennial's Revenge. I'm your host, Nick DiMaria, and uh, I'll see you at the next episode. Thank you so much. Take care.